Hello and welcome back to Tales of Lumen. Today we're talking about this handsome man right here, Nero Puppy. And this isn't a photo or anything like that, this is live. I'm sitting right here, he's lying in his bed, he's having a nap nap. But I want to talk about him because he had a rough couple of days. We went to visit my parents on the farm and he got a little injured and it made his whole, let's just say time there, kind of unpleasant. It's not nice. It's not nice when your little puppy gets injured. And we were worried, we were like really worried about it because there was blood and he was squeaking and squealing he just wasn't in a good place after it happened so let me back it up for a second and just tell you the story right from the start it's not very long it's not very entertaining it's not very drama filled it does have a happy ending so there you go it's all been spoiled for you but it's still quite good it's still worth hearing and Nero the little dude over there, he's still worth watching. Of course. Why wouldn't he be? This is top class entertainment right here. I should probably, every now and then, just every couple of days, record, I don't know, a minute or two of just Nero line there. Put some background music in, post it on the channel. Just to let you guys know that he's A-OK -okay and he still enjoys his naps tremendously. But... We went to visit my parents and other family members on the farm on Sunday and for the most part it was a good trip until we went for a walk. You know we did the normal thing so the human part of the trip was perfectly fine. We saw everyone. I got to see my sister's children. They are super cute as ever. We had nice food, nice conversations and all that other good stuff. but. When we went for a walk with Nero and the other two puppies on the farm, then what happens is we always go down to the river and the campsite on the farm and then Nero always runs and tries to find a stick that I can throw for him and it happens without fail. Like pretty much every single time we go down there, he immediately tries to find or finds a stick. He runs up to me and he's like, hey daddy, daddy this one right here, this is the one. This is the one that I'd like you to throw for me and I will fetch and bring it back to you with gusto in a great hurry so that happened he found a stick he brought it back I didn't throw it too much at first because we were in a sort of rocky and bumpy and unpredictable part of a field so we got down closer to the river the first river the one river that's there and there the grass and stuff was flat it was okay he could run easily so I threw the stick he ran after it then the stick landed and popped back up just as he bit at it so then the stick poked him in his mouth and all we heard was a big squeal and a whelp and then he was just like in shock okay he just stopped dead in his tracks and he stood there and he was not happy then I obviously ran over to him and I gave him like a big fat hug and he like cowered into my armpit. He does that when he hurts himself, when he's unhappy or whatever. He shoves his little schnoot under my arm and he hides. So he hid there and I just rubbed him a bit and I gave him a pat and then I tried to look at his face but he wouldn't let me and then finally I did get to look at his face and then I saw that his mouth was bleeding and I wasn't sure where the blood was coming from. So, you know, it was coming from somewhere inside his mouth and all I could see was, you know, lots of blood on his tongue, lots of blood under his tongue and that was it you know that was it and I was worried I immediately just checked to see if his all his teeth and his gums and everything were okay and that was fine so I assumed that it was somewhere inside his mouth and I still couldn't really see so you know I just left it at that and I took him down to the river quickly and he had a tried to have a lick or two of water and then when it kind of washed out, then I had another look inside his mouth and I could see that there was a red spot on his tongue. And then I thought to myself, that must be it. You know, that, that's got to be where the stick hit on his tongue. That could have been quite sore, you know, that could have been quite sore. But then we were still uncertain. We didn't know. And then a little bit later, I checked again. And I saw there was still blood in the bottom of his mouth. And then Helene said, well, she thought that maybe it cut the bottom part of his tongue where we couldn't really see because every time I opened his mouth and he lets me open his mouth I can stick my whole hand inside his mouth 
without him really complaining or whining or making a noise or anything like that. But whenever I did that, he just quickly sucked his tongue back and then I couldn't do anything with it. You know, I wasn't going to grab his tongue and pull it out to look. So I couldn't really see what was going on there. But then, you know, we carried on with the walk. I told him, no, we're not going to throw any more sticks. And he was surprisingly okay with that. And we went home and time passed. Okay, he looked miserable, completely miserable, but he seemed to be okay. But then when supper time came, okay, he just wouldn't have any of his food. He didn't want to even get close to it. It was like depressing him because I made him such a nice bowl of food. It was like full of pellets. Then there was some rice in there. There was some chicken in there. Then there was some duck sauce on top. Okay, it was so tasty looking and he knew that. The little dude knew that. Hey, my man, you knew, th you knew about the duck sauce, huh? Yes, he knew about the duck sauce. <sighs> so he was just not happy. I put the bowl of food down and then he squeaked. He didn't even go close to it. He just made a yelp. It was like saying, daddy, this is torture. Please take it away. And I tried to offer it him again. Didn't want it. And then we obviously got worried because we thought to ourselves, well, maybe it's worse than we first thought. And, ah. Uh, as concerned parents, we were concerned. Really concerned. So then I had to put his bowl of food aside, and we couldn't give him anything. And then, he usually, when we sit in outside Brian, or for the Americans, or other nationalities amongst you, barbecue in. Okay, so when we were making our food, he usually sits there on, like, this nice chair that overlooks the crowd of people, of humans. He's part of the festivities and the happiness. You know, he's always there, but this time around, he just wasn't. He went into our room and he went and lay on the bed and he was very unhappy. And I just went in there and checked on him, you know, every little while. I went in there and made sure he was okay. I covered him with his little blankie because it was kind of cold. It's the same blankie that he's got there right now, that blankie. So then time passed and he was still not very happy. He came outside once, he sat there, he looked very unhappy. You can go look at my Twitter, I think. There'll be some photos of him looking sincerely displeased. <laughs> oh, it was so bad. It was so unpleasant watching him be in such pain. Man. <sighs> then whenever one of us went to him and sat with him, he immediately just buried his head into whatever part of us he could find. Wherever his head could be buried. So he wasn't having a good time. And later in the evening, fortunately, what happened was... We had duck and chicken. Okay, those were the two meats of the evening. And he, at first, you know, he was a bit weary. And this was now like a good six or eight hours maybe after the walk, after the injury happened. And he had tried a couple of times between the walk and then to have things. I even offered him some, like, nice cold water. I offered him just some of the duck sauce, which was, you know, also... Not possible for him. I offered him a whole bunch of things. And none of that would work. And then eventually, I offered him some chicken. And if I bro when I broke it up into like tiny, tiny little pieces, he was okay with it. He was like 100% okay. He like slowly, slowly, like a real little grandpa, like popped his tongue out of his mouth. And like scooped the chicken up, sucked it in. And then he was happy. Okay, when he tasted that chicken, he was okay, and he realized that, well, this is possible. So then he took his time, and he ate the chicken out of my hand, and then he wanted more. So I gave him some more chicken, and I gave him a little piece of duck as well. And, you know, he, he started getting more confident with using his tongue, but he was still not happy, I could see it. And then a little bit later, a little while after that, I finally got him to have some of his food, some of his pellets and stuff, because he wasn't going to eat just chicken. That wouldn't have worked. It wouldn't have filled him up nicely. I don't think we would have given him enough chicken for that anyway. But finally, like, many hours after the injury, he decided, okay, now it's time to eat. And then he ate, and he ate, and he ate. And, man, we were happy. We were relieved. We were super relieved that our little puppy was eating again. And he was, you know, acting like he usually did. He was still not really having a good day, obviously, because he was injured and he wasn't feeling well. And then when we went to bed that night, he didn't sleep very well either. He did, however, wake up really early in the morning to go outside to make sure everyone in the farm was safe. 
because that's what he does. You know, he's a good watchdog. <sighs> but it was a tough time. And, needless to say, myself and Eileen, we were worried about our little man. We were worried. Because it could have been much worse. And, because of everything that happened now, because of the stick injured him and everything, we're going to try and cut back on that kind of stuff. And if we do do something like this, we're going to take a decent sized ball with him to the beach, throw it for him there, and that's going to be it. No more sticks with jagged edges. That's not going to happen. And I think what we both agreed would be better was just if we could get him to do doggish things. You know? If we could just, when we go for a walk, let him kind of run around with the other puppies. Because what the other dogs do, so Sophia and her little friend, his name is Bucky. So his name is something else, but that's what they call him. He's a little Jack Russell. They run around hunting things. Like little mice and stuff. They actually even caught a little baby mouse. It was disgusting. But they caught it. That's what they do. So they run around. They hunt things. They jump in the bushes. They look around. You know, they're just running up and down without any human stimulation. But this guy, he's a human puppy. He's one of us. And he wants to do things with daddy. He wants to do things with mommy. He wants that kind of entertainment. And we are, for the most part, okay with it. I like it. Okay? I like that he's such a human puppy. But at the same time... We might just start encouraging more doggy things. And if we go to the beach, I might just not take anything with. Just me and him. I'll go and run with him on the beach. Bit of daddy and Nero alone time. That could be cool. You know? I'll just let him run the beach and enjoy the smells and the sights and the sounds. I think that'll be good for him. I might even take him tomorrow morning just because I think I've got some time tomorrow morning. And he would definitely appreciate it. But there you go. That's what happened. I was also thinking that if I need to throw something for him, I can get, like I said, either a big ball. We've got a ball here. A big enough ball. Or I can buy one of those rubber bones. The biggish ones. That could work instead of like a stick, I'd say. But whatever. That's the drama we had while we were visiting the farm. We worried. But in the end, everything ended up being okay. He's got a bit of a sore tongue. It's probably bruised. Got a little hole in it now. But, you know, after I was actually allowed in his mouth, I checked and it seems like that was the spot. It just bled a lot because it was in his mouth. But it seems like it healed fast too because, well, it was in his mouth. But there you go. That is sadly going to be it for this video. I'm going to go give my little man a hug. He says, no, daddy, I need to see. I need to see and keep us safe while I nap. But that is going to be it for this video. Check back here soon for more. Give it a like and share it and do all that other good stuff. Send your warmest regards to Nero through the comment section of the video. Tell him, there, there, puppy man. It's okay. Hey, my dude. It's okay. <laughs> he just wants to sleep. I'm bothering him. <laughs> well, that's it. Happy that.